Top of the morning to you. Hey, I'm Michael. Great kids call me Rude. Thanks for being on uh, Rude Doodles Live Tuesday morning. It's uh, 8.57. It was uh, 8.56 and a quarter when I started that little nice piece of music. Isn't that cool? Um, I've used it before. Just had a little piece of music there. And I'm finishing a Rue here on the desk that um, I started a while back. There he is right there. And, uh, you know, it took off on a trip and never got to finish him. And it came back and I liked the way he had dried. But I felt like he uh, had blended well. He needed just a little bit more of, uh, as Lee and Zen would say, some beauty marks. And so I just uh, spent a, a couple minutes there just kind of, um, I think the right word is piddling around with him. Noodle doodle fiddle piddle. <laughs> and uh, I, I got ready to ship out some books yesterday. Uh, and a couple of you buy a uh, coloring book and uh, Hey Rue, what's a wheelbarrow? One noodle doodle fiddle piddle. I saw where some had ordered on Amazon a couple. Thank you. And uh, anyway, the story is uh, this. I uh, got everything just about ready to go and I had to make a trip to the post office to pick up our mail, which we've been gone for a while. And I got there and realized, uh, oh yeah, um, today's Abraham Lincoln Day, the President's Day, my president anyway. <laughs> And it was closed. I'm going like, I'm going like, man, look at this. Nobody's here today in line. I'm going like, well, I know why. And not even the attendant. Of course, sometimes I'm not sure they're there when we're there. All right, so that's it. A little rooster. He's gonna have, he's gonna be cropped about like so and have a little uh, caption. He's a nice root. I like it very much. Let me say hello to you. Uh, welcome to uh, top of the morning to you. It's showtime right here on Rue Fifty, whatever it is, eight fifty seven. Um, looking for encouragement, watching Rudy Day. I found a sweet little, oh, oh, sorry about that, Miss Carla. All right, so here we go. Let me, uh, let me jump in and say hello. So, Miss Carla, hello. First of you, Deborah Spangler, Karen Binder, Beverly Schmidt, all the way from Greenville, Jennifer Yentz, top of the morning to you all. Denise, it's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It's two, 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 two. Uh, Carol and I, you know, we're at Jekyll Island, and I may run that video again because I had some folks ask me, could you show that one more time? And I uh, that didn't see it Saturday morning. I'll I'll throw it later in the show, maybe if I remember. Um, that we, for years, when we would go up there and stay in that inn, and I had some business meetings there, uh, we were only an hour and a half from there in Jacksonville, so it was kind of fun to, or at the beach, Jacksonville beaches, and we would run up and uh, stay there. We They would put us up because we were part of a team they, would all, they knew where we'd like to stay, and I went there to do some storytelling a couple times for their team and staff, and it was kind of fun. Um, I'd go and I'd do, uh, they would do, um, put us in two, 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 no kidding. And so this time, uh, that unfortunately was booked. It was a last minute thing for us, and they put us in two, 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 three. And we go, the guy said, you know where your room is? I go, yeah, it's right there. And he goes, well, I think that's, I said, no, that's two, 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 that's two, 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 three. And he goes, you're right. How do you know that? You haven't been here in 20 years. I said, well, you didn't reconstruct the place. And I don't think you renumbered the room. Second floor, right above the uh, the grand staircase. I like it very much. 
Uh, I love it. There's a staircase that you can take up. Uh, you don't even have to uh, ride the elevator. <laughs> um, so that's kind of fun. Um, how did I get into that? Oh, it's two, 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 two. There's extra two in there. Kath, Heather Kuman, thanks for being on the show. Catherine Brassall, love it that you're here. Uh, let me just give you some little hello music here. Linda Schleitning, Kathy Morrill, Jacqueline Goodrich, Cindy Wiltermood, uh, Deborah Lynn Tauber. Thank you. Jennifer Thistle got a note from you. Uh, Paula, is it Paula? Lindy, like Wendy, see? Jackie Wallace, the AC's back on in Louisiana. Yeah, you don't need the AC here uh, today, but it's kind of nice. Donna Sill Barton, thanks for being on the show. Ruth Fulton, without even looking, I'm going to tell you from the sunny green fields of Ireland, which sometimes are the sunny, uh, damp fields of Ireland, but we are so glad you're on the show. I am, me and the Ruse here. Uh, and this community, too. This community welcomes each other like no community I've ever seen. You all are magical. Uh, love it. Lori Stanley, Hendermeyer Henderson, Gail Anderson, Pat Brooks. Love having you on. Yes, it's Pat's got it. Two, 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 two train. That's the one I love. Laura Abbott, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Rain Drench, she says. Nancy Catlett, maybe you're inside. Uh, Carol and I, did you, you'll see in the video and you saw it. The other day when we were wandering around Jekyll Island, it's it's poor people are running, you know, they're putting magazines over their head and newspapers and some have umbrellas, they were thinking. We're just walking slow in our space and, and we've always had this saying, frogs and people are waterproof. You know, it's like, so what? You know, your, your shirt's gonna get wet. And I said, you know, I wash them sometimes. Your, your clothes, your, your leather bag's gonna get wet. I'm going like, cows are out in the rain, they're leather. And so uh, we just kind of walked along. It was pleasant. And uh, and then it started raining hard. And then it, we found it kind of humorous. We're going like, you know, we're the only ones out here walking on the beach right now. <laughs> Gene Anthalzer, glad you're on the show today. Lauren Lawless, Pat Normandale, um, Lisa Crosley, welcome. Sips of coffee. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Barbara Meyer, thanks for being on the show. June Jones, I'm having tea this morning. Thai food tea. As a matter of fact, I need to fill up my cup. Let me find my... I put some in a hot thermos. Well, no, I put it in a thermos to keep it hot. That's a long story, huh? How does a thermos know if it's hot or cold? All right. Uh, Ann Westra, good morning to you. Uh, Blizzard, Minnesota. Yeah, and that's why I live in Charlotte, Ann. Glenda Edwards Small, thanks for being on the show. Terry Tardy, happy painting. Blessings to you, my friend. Hope the throwing the pots is going well. I don't mean throwing them literally, but I do mean um, throwing them literally. Trish Brown, uh, welcome. Gretchen Hay, and that's Hay, not Hay, H-E-Y, but Hay, H-A-Y, like put up in your barn and uh, feed those horses, but Gretchen Hay, Smith Hay. Um, I think I said Jennifer, uh, is anyone else experiencing live video interruption? It, just kidding. That's an old Red Skelton thing. It could just be me, but uh, yeah, it happens. You know, welcome to the internet. Uh, we live in this world of technology that sometimes doesn't work, but uh, sorry about that. Uh, all right, let's move ahead. Uh, Dolores Bolin, thank you. Rhonda D. Hart from Faith. Uh, Chris Whitaker, I saw your note yesterday, uh, just on a blurb, had a moment with a cup of tea, said uh, you're trying the 12, is it uh, 1264 paper you were trying, I believe? Um Yes, it can get a little toothy, especially if you're using a rapidiograph. Remember those? Those are your micron pens. They were called in college days, which I had very little of, pens and college, uh, rapidiograph pens, but you had to take them all apart. Needlepoint, just fine line, ever so fine line. Uh, those That paper, anything with 100% cotton, especially if it's 140, and, and you, I know you're branching out there, but you like hot press, and those pens are, yeah, they'll cruise on hot press. Vellum even better. Uh, and that's part of what you have to learn as you just go through. And I've, uh, I've got a fine, an ultra fine, um, which I can't find since my trip. How about that? An ultra fine I can't find. Must be hiding with my bluebird I lost yesterday. Anyway, the, the point is uh, pens and paper have to match. So that's some of the things that you're going to make mental notes of. Whether you keep a journal and you say, hey, don't use this with this or this with this. Eventually, you'll just go, I'm not going to use this pen on 100%, I will that one, but my other pen, 
which is made by Kakuno by Ultrafine. I won't use it on 100% cotton paper, 140 pound. It's just too rough on the nib. And even though the pen's 15 bucks, that's 15 bucks. And so as an artist, you know, you want to claim those 10 and 15 bucks and uh, use them for a good cause. Uh, Raylene Culberson, thank you for being on the show. Jamie Rice, uh, Karen Miller, Andy Bean, um, Teresa Emmerich, uh, Emmerich, um, Kathy Mora, Susie DeLay. Um, all right. Lisa Pet- uh, Petrosor, Petrosor. Yeah, man. Happy Ultimate Tuesday. <laughs> Susan Peters, Jennifer Yaw. Wow, well, I love it. You people. Jeanette Seal, thanks for jumping on the show. Um, yeah, uh, Miss Carla had to get Mr. Toad in there. I thought it would bring uh, the, the tone up a little. Uh, it's a fun little song. And so thanks for letting me just play that and uh, smile through. Uh, life goes on. All right. Pat Lightbody, uh, Sleepy Ice, Wisconsin Hugs. There you go. B.R.L., thanks for being on the show. Melina Phillips. Michelle, Renee, thank you for being on the show. I know you as Michelle, Renee. Yeah, don't I? <laughs> hey, friend. Uh, Joan Carey. Joan, I don't remember saying your name too many times. You may have popped on the show. I just These come in at different times, so thank you for being on here. Burke, thank you for being on all the way from Greenville, man. So I uh, love having you on the show. Yeah, I have a set of repeat. Look at that. I have a set of repeatograph from college. They do tear up a page. Oh, man. They're, they're like a scalpel and will cut a piece of paper. You'll be doing something. You'll sh- Carol had a whole set of repeatograph pens that she carried as an art student. and uh, But she also had uh, uh, one of her names, you know, is Crayola. So she also had a box of crayons. That, and she kept three uh, crayons in the bib of her overalls that she wore most of the time in art class. Yes, overalls. I married a hippie, people, a gypsy hippie. I love it. All right. Chinoa, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Javine McCabe, thank you. All right. Here we go. Let me jump ahead here. And uh, I, I promised you yesterday I'd, I'd show you something that I was working on. I'm just going to find a little piece of dramatic music. Da, 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 da. Yesterday, I pulled out something. I took the plastic off of this Joe's Prime really good cradled panel, painting panel, 10 by 10. This is made for acrylic and oil painting to paint on wood most of the time. You hardly ever paint on wood with watercolor paint. Most people hardly ever do it. I paint on everything with watercolor because I like it. Now, it doesn't work on glass and it doesn't work on yuppo paper. And there's some things you just go, you don't do. But I don't paint on those papers anyway. Every now and then I get a piece of wood and I just thought, I'll try it. So if you remember what I did, I opened it up. This is the back and I did, it's primed. That doesn't mean it's gessoed completely. Uh, it doesn't mean it has a, a, a background painting on it, which would have made some sense if you were doing oil or acrylic. In this case, I just wanted to paint right on the pickled piece of panel and I just painted it. You can see where I'm getting some runs here and that drain in this fine piece of panel is taking the water and letting it do these little shoots. Can you see that? Anyway. I wanted you to see, so I took this concept, I went with a pen, I didn't sketch with a pencil, I just sketched this little rooster with the pen, and I actually went over some of the parts twice yesterday between cups of tea and emails and other business work that I was working on, so I'd come back in and I'd add a little bit just like this, just to beef it up, and I wouldn't go all the way to the edge and just let it run out. And here's what I came up with. I remember I wanted to do something similar to this for my wall, or I don't know now, I may just keep this one because it's so fun and original. It's the first one I ever had. I painted this one uh, back in 2012. 2012, I painted that. Just learning how to paint, not knowing about much about holiday. So here's what I painted. Drum roll, please. Boom, there it is. There is the painting on this panel. Here's the panel. Here's what it looks like on the side. Um, I'll probably paint this in a, some color, maybe just maybe with this blue. Just take this blue and run it all. That's a good idea. I'll run it across the edge there. Let's see what it's going to look like if I do. I'm getting ready to make a big mess, but I think it's going to look fantastic. You know, I might make, take this to the coffee shop today and put a price, big price tag on it. I, they just called me last night and said, hey, we sold three of your paintings today. And would you bring us some more paintings? So I might do that. That could be kind of fun. Um, you know, some musicians in the little town of Matthews, North Carolina. Matthews is an up and coming place. It's uh, it's the town that time forgot and people love it for that reason. There we go. So that's, uh, I may paint those other panels 
and just run that down there. So it says, here's what it says is, okay, in the key of G, let me be your, come on, stop this music. It says, okay, in the key of G, uh, let me be your salty chicken, but change the word to dog. And those of you who are bluegrass fans at all know, let me be your salty dog, or I'm going to be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Somebody you think that song was written for the Andy and Mayberry show, but it really wasn't. It was um, it was really written a long time before that. And they just, the Darling family, which were the Dillards in real life, they would come on and jump in that truck. They uh, would do that song. And she says, let's do, let me do your salty dog. And she says, don't do that. It makes Darlene cry. <laughs> or Charlene. Make Charlene cry. So there is foot on a wash tub. Let me be your salty chicken. And that doesn't sound right if you're a rooster. Change that word to dog. So there it is. Um, that's that's it. Um, yeah, I painted on those and with clear gesso, just saying you have to watch the grain. Um, I didn't have to paint it over. Yeah, Jane Gillette, you got to be careful when you paint on wood. So I'm just telling you, uh, is this the best for painting with watercolor? Absolutely not. But if you play around with it, you'll get a good bleed. You'll actually uh, use a little more water here because I really wanted this to kind of rain down a little bit. Doesn't look like it's just raining down. Be good to paint a hen out in the rain here with an umbrella. You can see here where you just, you never get these streaks like that. Um, you'd get more of a blend with watercolor cotton or regular watercolor hot press, cold press. Um, anyway, there's what it looks like. It's all done. And um, I may paint it blue and take it, hang it on the wall. And I may I may put a price on it that's uh, pretty serious and just uh, see if somebody wants watercolor on wood. But I want you to see that finished up. Here we go. Hey, it's uh, spring's coming soon. How would you seal it? That's a great question, June Jones. Sometimes I don't seal my work. Um, it's not like acrylic and oil where you do have to seal it and varnish it. In this case, if I really wanted it sealed and I wanted it to pop, which I would grab a, a little bit of a clear def spray or just your glossy uh, clear coat, not brush it on with the polyurethane brush. I don't want to be brushing over that. And I want to drift in from about 16, 18 inches away. And I want to use very light spray and I want to do it in about two coats. I want to go and put it down and let it go. If you try to come in and you coat it with a clear lacquer spray, it's going to cause this paint to loosen up, become watery again, and then you're going to ruin your painting. Trust me, I know. These are the things that you need to learn. Uh, and also, this is why you practice on small pieces of blocks and things like that. In, your paint. in most cases, I wouldn't do anything to this. I just put a little note on the back that says, do not hang in direct sunlight uh, or where there are termites. <laughs> okay, because it's it's wood and they'll eat it, or um, whatever those uh, whatever those little bugs are that eat books. Hey, it is the weirdest thing to still have a brain that uh, reaches just like that for a word. I wasn't kidding there. Reaches for a word after COVID. It's um, it takes a while. Doctor Jim, where are you when I need you? It takes a while to those synapses. <laughs> line up in your brain and get those roads and tracks and tributaries back together. So that's why I think watercolor is good for you. That's why I think muscle memory is good for you. I really think making anything, building models, putting uh, puzzles together, which I don't like to do. Uh, Carol loves it. Her, her mind is a Tetris mind anyway. Um, Tetris isn't that the old game Tetris. It's just fabulous what it does. My mind is, um, I'm not there. Can't do that. All right. So I uh, wanted to paint something today because it's spring. And uh, it's not spring yet, but it's coming. And I thought I'd take this over to the uh, to the coffee house today. And I thought I'd show you. It's a painting that I've done before. And I woke up thinking I should paint that today because I need one to remind us that spring is coming. We're riding into spring. So I'm going to rip a piece of this uh, sample paper off. This is uh, the Kilimanjaro 10 inch by five and a half. They say 10, but I honestly believe by the time you get your paper ripped out of here, you're going to be finishing up at about, if you get nine inches out of this, even in a, even a five and a half by eight, wonderful painting size. Um, so this, they've beefed this paper up. It used to be a little thinner. Now it's a little slicker. It's good cover page. It's, it's not great test paper for what this paper is like. 
Does that make sense? Let me say that one more time. This paper that's in between, the flyers that are in between the 140 pound watercolor paper, like this, there's a little flyer piece between each one. They are better cover sheets and just test sheets with doodling and for a, maybe a quick journal sketch thing than they are painting on with watercolor. It's pretty slick and, uh, and, and it's gonna be like painting on uh, Bristol board almost, a little thinner. But anyway, it's probably no more than 65 pound. I don't know if they even list it. I'm sure they don't. Um, I'll ask them sometime when I'm in the shop and see. Okay, maybe a rooster tiptoeing through the tulips. Uh, Susie, you asked how to seal it. There we go. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Jennifer Mallet, thank you. Appreciate maybe a rooster tiptoeing through the tulips with a ukulele. Tiptoe through the tulips. That shows my age. I remember when Tiny Tim first appeared on television and my dad goes, what the heck is that? My dad was a guitar player, pocket knife carrying a uh, pencil behind up in his cap and uh, uh, said that all math in the whole world could be figured out with a square, a builder's square, if you just knew everywhere to <laughs> loop it and, and put it together. All right, here we go. So I'm thinking a uh, little uh, little music here. <laughs> uh, let's see what happens. All right, Cody Martin, what are you playing today? Oh, there we go. All right, a little music from uh, Cody Martin. Here we go. So my thought was I'd, I'd probably do this with a pencil, but um, in this case, there are two ways to do this. One is you would want to draw it in a pencil because it's going to be a rooster on a bicycle. I've done this before. So it means I've got to have the two working together. It's going to be flat. I'm not going to try to do it on any weird uh, uh, angle, but my point is I've got to create the wheels, the tires of the bicycle here like so. And, and so then I've got to make sure that my, my uh, I've got to make sure that the rooster where his feathers are hanging down over the bar and over the seat and where maybe his, some of his tail feathers will hide the tire. I want to, I want to do this in pencil. This is a good cause for a sketch like a, a skater on thin ice. Okay. So that's what you're going to have to do here. So uh, bicycles are, are, are drawn pretty simply. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. They are, they are three, what I call three, um, um, golly, I'm, I'm struggling today. I'm sorry. And I'm not tired. Well, maybe I'm tired. There are three triangles. Here we go. You've got, uh, you've got this one is the bar across. You have this one is the uh, front bar down. That's going to be where the front tire comes out here. Take a look at what I've got going here. You've got this one coming down. You've got this strange, uh, almost a right triangle. It's tipped just a little bit. So there's a triangle. See it right there? Remember I said triangles are important to learn how to draw? And then take a look what you got here. You've got another triangle here. All right, let me do this in pen so you can see it. Take a look. I just drew this triangle right here, sort of like so. There's a triangle. I drew this other triangle here like that. Boom. Okay. And you're going like, what is he doing? That doesn't look like a bicycle. Oh, yeah, yes, it does. There's the seat. Here's the crank right here. Here's the back tire right here. There's the... Here's the front fork, almost another triangle if you join that line. And so you suddenly do it. I'm gonna do it one more time for you. Take a look. Here is, oh, here, I'll do it right here on this. Uh, this is, comes up, this comes due, down, up. There's my triangle. Look, now I'm gonna go in here and go here and come down here and there's my other triangle. Does that look like a barn roof to you? Yeah. When you teach your grandkids to draw a bicycle, you can say, oh yeah. They're going like, I don't know where this goes and I don't know how to put this in or what's this attached to or does this come down here? You're going like, no, 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 just draw a triangle, something like this. There we go. And then draw another triangle like that. There it is. There's your bicycle. And then put a wheel on it here and then put a wheel on it here and then put a crank on it here and you're done. Ta-da! Is it? Can you imagine? Um... All right. Okay, so there, so there we go. So anyway, where, where was I going with this? Oh, I guess that's it. I guess that's all I need to do. What I was going to show you is though. So these pieces have to be drawn in pencil because then I'm going to put the I'm going to put the painting in here. I'm going to put the uh, rooster in here, and I got to figure out where he goes. 
And then I want some of his feathers to cross over the bar, some of his tail feathers to come down over this. So I have to make sure I can erase that. That's why I'm doing it in pencil today. Here we go. I'm gonna paint it on some of this paper. It's uh, 140 pound, there's a piece of it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and rip it off so you can just see me work flat without this in place. Maybe, I'm struggling here today. Michael, that has been the best tip for illustrating a bicycle. Thanks, Pat. I'll take it from a person who draws very lifelike things, but puts her own cartoon spin on them. But you know, it's just triangles. And you go, oh, and so some of you who get tired of me saying, if you learn how to draw triangles, if you learn how to draw circles, if you learn how to draw key, uh, whatever that is, cones and, and the squares, you can just about draw anything. So people who tell me that, well, I don't know how to draw, um, you just go, well, yes, you do, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> look, they're all around you. Take a look. I use triangle racers. That's that's my favorite right here. Um, this one was a triangle when it started. <laughs> now it's uh, a, a parallelogram. Ooh, I did pass geometry. All right, here we go. Um, do I need a template? All right, here we go. Could be. I could use a, a template here. Uh, There it is. Chef Charles says, give me that silver coin you have in your pocket. <laughs> All right. So this could be the inside of the wheel. So let me just put, uh, let me just put a little bit of a, uh, a wheel right here. Take a look. Just, just barely, just a little zip around that. See that right there? And then maybe put this one right here. Okay. That's, that's going to be a good place for it. Probably right there. It's a 1972 silver dollar. I uh, pull this thing out of the little convenience store and it never fails that the cash register who's under 25 years old goes, oh my gosh, what is that? Never seen a coin that big. And I go, it's a silver dollar. And they go, they made dollars out of silver? <laughs> uh, hey, I'm thinking that that's going to be the uh, inside of the tire. And I'm going to do the outside of the tire like this, get a little more uh, size on this bike. Look at that. And by the way, if you're ever looking at bicycles, now that you see the triangles that we've just drawn, I don't know what I did with them somewhere here. Oh, yeah, this is it right here. Um, look at the spokes in the wheel, too. I can't show you that because it's a pencil. You can see this. Here's the spoke. If I'm drawing the outside of the wheel here, then the wheel has a hub. You know, everybody who puts spokes on bicycles, you draw these little lines like this. That's really not how they're drawn. They're really drawn with this close X at the bottom like that. Did you see the difference? Take a look. Okay. Not just straight little lines that come out like this, but they come down and they just these little X's. And you're going like, wait, and the X doesn't cross way up here. Um, and all of them don't cross in the same place. And I'll tell you why, because they're in a circle. But most of the time they cross a little closer to the hub. And why is that? Well, because the hub is like this. If you're looking down on it, bird's eye, and it has all these lined up. And some go this way, some go this way, some go this way. And they're attached to different places uh, they're cast in the center, but because they're crossed, they give torque to the wheel. That's why you have a spoke tool. See, now you just learned something. So if you draw all the spokes like this, um, it looks good if you're doing pizza, but it doesn't look like a bike wheel until you have some X's in there. Go ahead, look at bicycles. And you'll get graphic artists who just pop them in there. Look, it's the point. But if you want to do it, you want to do it halfway right anyway. So so bike people are kind of excited about it. All right, so here's what I've got. Here's my uh, here's my uh, fork tube coming up. That's uh, that's coming up from the the hub on the bicycle. Uh, here is uh, here's my first bar of the triangle going down like so. This one's coming across. This one's going up here. Look, there's my first triangle. Do you see it right there? Okay. Uh, this one is coming down from here into here. Look, there's my second triangle. I just drew a bicycle. Now, why is it in pencil? I think I mentioned that earlier. It's in pencil because I'm going to erase some of it after I put my rooster on here. So I know his big old bottom is going to take up most of the seat. And he's going to have some feathers coming down like this. And he's going to have some tail feathers hanging over like that. And I know there's probably going to be a couple feathers coming over the bar. So now I've got him going in there. And he's going to be leaning forward a little like this. 
Why? Well, because he's he's reaching up to grab the handlebars, and he's going to be back like this. And, uh, oh, I like him already. And he's got his tail feathers are a little bit flustered out there. They're moving. They're going places. And here's where his leg's coming down by the bar. And then this foot is coming right in here. And that foot is going to catch a pedal that comes off this crank right here. And there's the crank. And then this other leg could come down this way and get the other one up there. So there you go. All right, so now I have him roughed in. I have his handlebars here. But that's not all he's out for spring doing today. No, 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 no. He's out with this painting that I like to do that has a basket on the front. And the reason it has a basket on the front is because it's filled with peeps. And they're all out catching something. So there he goes. And I'm going to ink it in now and give you an idea. Um, I like halfway right. <laughs> Uh, if we whined and said we couldn't do something, my mom would say, can't, never could. Yeah, don't you love that? I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, parallelogram. Yeah, you know, uh, I know about parallelograms. I, my uh, Miss Venable was, uh, Jack, you might remember this. Jack Wolfenbarger might remember Miss Venable. She taught uh, uh, geometry down in the, where the chorus room was. Remember, there was the, the, the men's chorus building was there. And then I'd go down and she would say, okay, today we're going to talk about infinite lines. And I'd go, you mean infamous lines? She'd go, no, no, no. Lines aren't famous. I said, I know some lines that are famous. Um, and so the ones in the lines then, those are famous. <laughs> and so she'd go, that's not what I'm talking about. She'd say, imagine that there are two lines and she would draw these lines on the board and she had a piece of uh, uh, an apparatus that she got from the music class that was like for drawing musical scales, you know, five, five, five pieces of chalk in each one. Sorry about my brain today. She would just put two in it and it would hold them the same. She'd go, imagine these two parallel lines and they go right off the edge of the board onto the wall and through this wall. I'd hold up my hands. It's Venable. My dad's a block mason. I have made mud and carried block and there's no way that those two lines are going to go through those cement block. They're just not going to do it. Those are chalk lines. She goes, no, imagine. I'm saying, I just, I just keep wrap my head around it. There's no way. She said, okay, what if we cut a hole in the wall? Okay, that's different. You didn't say that. Okay, so we've cut a hole in the wall. These lines are going to be parallel. They're going to go through here, through the wall, and then they're going to go on forever. And I'm going to like, that's, that's not possible. Have you seen what's over there? Trees. As soon as one of those lines hits one of those limbs on a tree, it's going to deflect. I've shot arrows in the woods. I know what's going to happen. And she'd go, oh, my gosh. Do you want to be somewhere else? And I said, you bet I do. Fishing. <laughs> and so, anyway, I passed. But, yes, I gave her a little bit of a, a hard time. And so, Miss Venable, if you're still on this planet, my dear lady, you were a champ to teach us all. And I did learn that pi r square, no, pi r round, cornbread r square. Okay. And so uh, I learned that too. Now I used to tell her that all the time. She was something else. She was a sharp lady though. And she was patient with me, believe it or not, in all that mud pie mess that I used to do. So, uh <clears throat> All right, so here is, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I could uh, do this without a pen, but I'm going to put it in here so you can see it. Sometimes, you know, I don't paint the tail feathers necessarily in pen. Uh, and I don't do a whole lot of, uh, this is the time that I would use a pencil, but take a look what's happening. Now it looks like in real life that this rooster is, uh, and I want this bar to come down over the tire. See that right there? And then right behind his leg, I got a little bit of here. This is going in right here. That leg is in front. Here's the crank. There's the arm coming out. There's the pedal on this foot. This is going to be the chain. So the chain's going to be going back like this over this one. Um, there is a bar that goes through here, and that bar is on the outside of this wheel. So there's the brace bar. comes down like this. Um, here's the handlebar that comes over. That one comes in. He's got an arm out there if, if chickens have arms. This one's going to come down over the tire like so. So I suddenly have this good feel for this rooster who is wrapped around this bicycle in such a way that it looks like which came first, the rooster or the bicycle? Did, did anybody know I was going there? You couldn't have because I didn't know I was going there. All right, so uh, now I'm going to take this and just look. I'm not trying to copy these exactly, but that silver dollar worked really well for the inside of my wheels. Now I'm just going to go in here and scope around this like so. Uh, it's springtime. People get out on their bicycles. I'm telling you, man, uh, 
we saw bicycles all over Jekyll Island. And and you you live on a bicycle if you're in Florida. You know, Northeast Florida, I'm, I'm just telling you, this comes down through the wheel like so. All right. So so there's my bicycle coming together. Dang, that looks pretty good for a man who doesn't know how to draw a bicycle. Uh, this uh, this is the sprocket. It has some things in it here. I want, I want a little bit of this leg coming down this way. And... Um, and then we'll put the tire over there. That's the other leg coming down. It's perfect. It's on that side. It's behind. Um, now, little uh, some some little wires around this. Got a sprocket here with the chain, but also have the little. Now I'm going to put the spokes in in a minute. <coughs> I'll put a little cross hatch under here because you just got to have this bicycle sitting on something. He's got to be traveling here, and he's probably out in the grass. So let's cross hatch it a little bit like that. Um, make it up the story as I go. Why not? Right? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Marie Moore says, you're like my son. <laughs> Marina Moore says, you're like my son. He'll argue with every single point. My, um, my, uh, mother said you would argue. She used to tell my brother, you'd argue with the fence post. And the fence post would give up, and you would have the right to win. Is directly what she would say. So, uh, so here we go. This is a little bit of a basket on top of uh, this bicycle hanging out here, um, and I'm I'm thinking it's a, a, a not a not a wire basket, but maybe a little wooden basket. I'll show you why in just a minute. I, I think wooden baskets are a little classier. All right, where's my uh, triangle eraser? Now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to knock out some of these. Uh, these pencil lines, I don't have to. I can paint it with the pencil lines in there. Sometimes I like my watercolor with pencil lines where it looked like the artist did a study underneath. I love that. There's nothing wrong with that uh, to me at all. Uh, but if I want to clean it up a little bit just for the purpose of this demonstration today, I'll do it. It's springtime. Got to see some bicycles out there. And they got to, and they got to be some, uh, some uh, what's the colors that I'm trying to say? Uh, spring colors. They got to be lavender and uh, they got to be uh, peach and, and they need to be uh, terry tardy turquoise and, and maybe this uh, cerulean blue. And we got to build some bicycles that... Uh, so that, that's your project for this week. And then Saturday morning, post some on Roost Crew. And let me take a look at some of the bicycles. Um, draw a couple bikes without anything. Just maybe park, uh, parked uh, on the landscape or uh, near some rocks or some flowers or whatever you do. Uh, you don't have to put a rooster on it. That's kind of what I do because that's what I do. What do I do? Who knows? Okay, so there we go. There's the start of it right there. Kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and finish the drawing so you can sort of see where it's going before I paint it. I think that'll be helpful. Uh, <clears throat> Carol Todd Monday was she bald by the time you left class. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Ruth, you, if you live in England or Ireland and on the sunny fields, when it's not sun's not shining, you got to get on that bike and go. And, and in Florida, different bikes here. We have heels. In Florida, it was all flat. We had beach cruisers with the bigger tires. And uh, I built a little trailer behind mine, and it had boogie boards and a little place for the grill. Sun Carol had mandatory Sunday afternoon time at the beach. We got home from church. I cleaned up everything. I was a musician there, and I took care of all the sound stuff and all the music. And So when we were done with that and I got home, she would have, um, we would sometimes have lunch at home and then she would pack other things in the cooler that fit on the trailer with the boogie boards, with the tools and the digging tools and the sand tools. And then I'd pull that and we would go to the beach and we'd stay there until the sun goes down. And uh, that was our Sunday afternoon as a family. We were less than half a mile away from uh, the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And so why not just go out there and just chill, dig a big hole. I think I've told you my story one time where we were digging a hole one time. <laughs> That was, uh, it was deep enough to, you could stand in it. It was up to here, you know, up to my chest deep, you know, probably my belly button anyway. And, and man, the lifeguard guys came by in the truck and he stopped. He said, what in the world are you doing? I said, we're digging on the beach, man. We had big shovels. And he goes, you fill that hole up right now. Do you know how dangerous that is? We go, he said, what's that for? And I said, bicycle trap. We're going to cover it with this fine sawgrass that's washed up here on the beach. We're going to lay a thin layer of sand over that. And we're going to wait till night. Some of those bikers come along. They're going to fall in there. We're going to get their bikes. 
And I just said it like that, being completely, and man, he was like on his radios and people over here, they're trying to steal bikes and going like, you're a nutcase. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, life is way too short for us to take everything so cotton picking serious people. You know why angels fly, right? Because they take themselves so lightly. Hey, that's right there in the book, Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. Take yourself a little lighter, especially when you're painting. Okay. Hey, um, you see me racing a couple times, and here's why. Because for demonstration purposes, I sketch this a little heavier than I normally do. What's the rule in Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle? Sketch like an ice skater skating on thin ice. Look, I understand the Olympics just closed. I didn't see any of it, but I heard they did. And I know there's people that were skating this year. And you don't want to skate like you're going to fall through. That's a long way to the concrete. Okay, so... Uh, let's paint this and see what happens. Got to wake these paints up. Wake up. I love it. I'm doing it now. I used to say it sometimes, and now I say it all the time for those kids that watch and go, wake up. Give them a little shot of this paint. And uh, I'm going to grab this uh, little number two bamboo brush here and uh, and put my silver dollar back in my pocket before <coughs> Chef Charles drives in and steals it from me. And, um, and then I'm going to just start. And I should put on some... Uh-oh, I dropped my... That's why you wear a white shirt right there. Okay, I, I need a little uh, tricycle equals joy, okay? Pat, uh, Pat's on a tricycle, and uh, I'm sure there's a story there, but... Oh, yeah, that's bicycle music right there. <laughs> Cruising down the boulevard. All right, so I'm just going to go in here with a little uh, Joe's Red Hot Mama mixed together a little bit. Just come in here. No water on the paper yet. Just went, I went paint on dry paper, okay? Just as simple as that. I'm going to go in here with uh, my uh, Lamy brush, Lamy like mommy. And uh, looks like it's falling apart. Just give me a little bit of black right in here. Just some little... Um, accent marks coming down like so underneath. Look at that right in there. There's one right there. Yeah, this music can go last long, but it's okay for right now. Give me a little bit of water in this tail, just like this. Just a little bit of water. Dancing my brush around, not trying to do like I'm painting a house, not rolling it. I want to get some of my blue that I really love in the tail of roosters. I love this French blue. It's kind of one of my trademark colors. If you have a trademark color, that sounds kind of arrogant, but you know what I mean. You can look at my roosters and go, I think that's Rue's rooster because he loves that blue. I also love just a piece of orange that would just jut in there somewhere and just find its way into this rooster. That's kind of fun. The black's coming together. Keep it loose. Keep it loose because he's riding a bicycle. The wind's blowing through his feathers. I want to come in with a little gamboge yellow. I'm going to touch some of it right here first just to straighten my brush out. Then I'm going to go in here. I'm using a bigger brush for this bill, but I'll get it. Beak. Is it a bill or a beak? I think it's probably called a beak. I think a bill is what they send you in the mail or the waitress brings to your table, which she calls a check. Would you like your check? And I go, yeah, how much is it for? All right. A little turquoise right in here, but not too much. And I'll tell you why. It's because I think this bike is going to be turquoise so i don't want to uh, i don't want to compete with those two but a little bit of purple would come down that's kind of a cool color right there all right i think i'm gonna leave this um i'm gonna come in with a little french gray right here do, 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 and let that touch and i'm just gonna hit my brush on my hand with some of that french gray and let it rain down in the back right there can you see that all right um i, I think this box should be a a light, just a just a little light brown like this right here, maybe a sienna color. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let that dry. I'm gonna grab uh, I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. Let's see, I can do it with this. This is a number six, which somebody asked me yesterday what my if I had to go buy two brushes tomorrow, what would I buy? I'd probably say a six and an eight. If you wanted a small brush, you could buy a three. These are American Journey brushes. By the way, folks, these brushes are not outrageous because they're interlock nylon. 99% of everything that I do is with interlock nylon or with bamboo, 100%. I've never owned a sable brush. Uh, it, do I think that it's wrong to spend money for a sable brush? No, I don't. But I think you probably are painting art and selling art at a higher cost than I do. I I could, I mean, 
I met two artists last week who said, you know, here's one of the problems with your show. You, and I said, thank you for finding problems with my show. He said, well, you don't sell your art for enough. And I go, it's enough for me. It's fair. And so, so that's kind of where I am with that. And so, um, I'm painting it with brushes that don't cost uh, $85. Uh, do I have a $35 brush here? Yeah, I probably do. This is probably a $25 brush here. And it's a one-inch um, nylon brush. Um, and, and brushes can get outrageous. And brushes, you can spend a lot of money on it. But I'll tell you, uh, Vance Havner was an old Baptist pastor that died in 1980. One and he, I I love his books of quotes because he says some cool things and uh, he says you don't need to put on an admiral suit to cross a mud puddle and so if this brush works perfect for my style and it costs nine dollars why do I need a fifty nine dollar brush to do the same thing well you're gonna like the way it blends I go no I, I let the water do that well you're gonna like the way that it strokes well I don't really stroke my work like that I just let the water drip well you're gonna like it I'm gonna like so far you haven't answered my question why do I need to pay fifty dollars more for a brush that does the same thing and so do I like to argue with the fence post yes um do I win sometimes and sometimes I lose and it's okay that, that's not my point my point is you need to use what works for you. What did I say uh, Monday or Saturday? Know your tools. Learn your tools. Learn how to use your tools, and uh, and you'll be a happier painter if you do. You only do that by uh, making mistakes, trial and error. That's the only way you can do it, folks. Okay, so you see this coming together. I think you know where this is going. Um, uh, put that back thing on the bike we used to sit on at a chick. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a that back thing was a, a little tailpiece that comes back there. Uh, <laughs> I thought, and I've done a bike with that. That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> Same here, you'd argue uh, black crow white. I love it. A bicycle built for Rue. That's funny. Uh, Terry Tardy, Turquoise, you knew it was coming. Yeah, you have to. It's coming more than that. It's going to be the color of my bicycle, uh, Terry. So um, there we go. Amy Roach, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Carol Todd Mundy, I just spoke your name. Thank you for being here too, as well. Um, Let's see. Looking to see if there's any. Just pass me some good letters every time I play. Uh, okay, here we go. I like travel size brush, shorter handle, easier to pack, take along. Uh, you know what, Jacqueline? Those are fun. And I have a couple travel size brushes, but I've, here's what I find. I find that I don't use them very much unless I'm sitting at a bar. And since I'm not a drinker, I'll go there and have some chocolate milk. But uh, this is a travel size brush right here. Uh, it's a number six. And here's the uh, number six that I just used. So you can see the problem for me. Same brush, a little fatter handle. Uh, this brush, I lose this part of the handle that balances against my finger. And so I feel like I'm, uh, this I feel like I can move with my shoulder. And this I feel like I can't. But if I'm at a bar, I'm usually painting a small four by five inch, no bigger than a four by five inch whiskey painter size anyway. And so this works and I can rest it up in there like that. But when I'm out here on my desktop, so, you know, there again, it's just all about taste. Um, uh, my favorite, I do use a six and a, a, a rigger or rugger. I think Renee maybe said a rigger because she is uh, really good at detail. A rigger brush is kind of fun. A rigger brush has longer hair in it. Uh, let me see if I can show you one here. Voila, this is probably a number three rigger right here. Take a look. Yep. Uh, this is a number three American Journey rigger. Take a look at the length of the brush hair. See that? Okay. And when this is wet, by the way, this would be a good brush to do those spokes in if I were painting the spokes in. But I'm just going to do them in pen. A rigger brush is great to do those long lines with. It's just super if you're doing things like this. Um, now that I've put ink all over my page, what was I thinking? Okay, I was demonstrating. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> ah, gosh. 
Uh, does that guy really do art online? He's a mess. Yes, he is. Okay, sorry. All right, here we go. Let's see. I'm going to need a little bit of uh, just uh, some color here. And I'm thinking this net is going to have a just a touch of green in it. Why would it have green in it? Well, because um, it's, it's a net that you want to get close in there into your... There we go. Look, I'm just bringing it in a little like this, maybe with a little brown handle. So I'm using the tip of that brush. This is a number three, maybe. Yep, I'm getting there. Okay, so so there we go. Uh, I want some Payne's Gray. Uh, Donna Buckley's been uh, on and off the show for a while, but every time I do Payne's Gray, she usually she gives us a shout out. Payne's Gray! And so there it is. The wheels are just going to be the tires. These are not the tires. The wheel is what holds the tire together or up. So there it goes. Hey, I'm actually spending a long time on this painting. And so you're... Uh, you're seeing it come together. This is longer than I do, but I've been talking and telling stories in the process. But if you look, I'm just building it up like this a little bit and going in here. Now you can see why that rooster had to appear on the bike before I did everything. Because if I did that with pen, I'd be messed up for sure. I want to put a little bit of just some brown in these tires, just like that, so they look like they're dirty. I don't like my paintings to look like they just came off of a shelf. Uh, you know, even when I'm doing blacksmithing work, I, I don't paint my work because if you paint uh, forged iron and you paint it with a glossy black, it looks like it's plastic and I'm going like, or it looks like aluminum fencing and I'm going like, why would I want that? That's, that's not what I want. I want it to look like it's been hammered and hit and it has natural marks in it and it's, it looks real to the touch. Uh, I'm using a number three. This would be a good job for that rigger, but this is a number three round. I'm just being careful. I'm pulling down some uh, Terry Tardy turquoise right in here. Um, and, and I think I've got plenty of water in my brush. It's looking like it's working pretty well. There's a bar that goes across there like that. And then I think maybe I'll just go ahead and uh, take some paint out of this brush and just cause those uh, hubs to be a little less bold in their turquoise, okay? Uh, handlebars, just a little, uh, I think the handlebars are just kind of gonna go what they are, whatever color came out of the ink. Uh, gonna go a uh, little little bigger brush here. Uh, use this number six again. And uh, I don't change brushes uh, this much most of the time. I'll usually have a bamboo brush and I just do everything with that. But I thought this might be kind of a fun way to, to bring in some, uh, just showing you what I grab, but especially after the the uh, question yesterday of what kind of brushes, if you could buy two, what would you buy? And I think I gave Linda, I think I gave you a hard time yesterday. It wasn't a hard time, was it? I saw your granddaughter painting and I noticed that she had a little brush that was probably from a, a Michaels or somewhere like that. It's a little red brush and it just had fuzz on the hair, uh, a hair on the, the end that uh, looked like this, uh, nylon bristles uh get her a brush that holds a shape more like this and watch her painting change and then help her say this is never the style that you use a brush and you never push a brush down i wish i had an old brush here and i would show you let's see what i have here i can probably show you with this brush right here it's a it's a you never push a brush down like this can you see that right there kids paint like this Oh, you really can't see that. Kids paint like that. See that brush pushed down like that? I say never, but, you know, brushes are made to do that. But most of the time, let let their brushes, you know, they'll go in and they'll go scrub, scrub, scrub. And they're thinking, oh, well, I'm just 10 years old and I've learned to paint with crayons. And that's how you have to paint with a crayon. So give them brushes that have shape and you'll see their art get a little better. A brush that is shaped like this as opposed to a brush that's just kind of going like, woohoo. Uh, because those little brushes, when you try to make a line, they, they never come together. All the little hair, they're just craft brushes for doing uh, decoupage things and putting on glue. And you can buy, you know, 10 of them in a pack for $2. Uh, it'd be best if you didn't. So there, how's that for a little coaching? All right. Uh, and Chris says, you can do great art with cheap brushes. You bet. You bet you can. But you can't do, uh, <clears throat> you can't teach kids with a brush that just is, I wish I had one of them here and I'd show you, but I think I'm, I don't even have those kids. I take these brushes that are kind of old to me and I put them in my grandkid jar. Uh, I don't let them use the little craft brushes from, uh, it just, it's hard to do good work with them. So, okay. Uh, <clears throat> 
anyway, uh, enough of me uh, telling you what you should do. I, I want to put some spokes in here. Remember what I said? I'm just going to do these X's that cross sort of near the bottom. Some will cross a little farther out, like so. But the majority of them cross near the bottom. And this is how I do it. If I counted these, it'd be the exact number of spokes that are on a bike frame. You're going like, you're not telling the truth. And I'm not. But I just want to fill it up like that. So uh, that's kind of how it is. But don't just kind of run them all out in a circle and think they're going to look good. Get a little twist in there and you're going to say, oh my gosh, there's a little detail in this bike. And if a person who is a, a cyclist um, wants this painting, they're going to go, dang, I like the way you did the tires. Thank you so much for doing that. And, and they're going to get it. Okay. Then you can go back in and you can put a little double rim in there like so. You go in there. I think uh, this needs two other things. I think it needs what these little peeps might be after here. So let's see if I did this the right way. It'd be something like this. Let's see if we go down like this. Let's just put some uh, Let's put some little flying things out there, you know, maybe some bees there. Maybe they're chasing some bees. Maybe there's a, uh, maybe there's a butterfly up there. They're chasing that. Uh, maybe there's some no here. Uh, maybe there's a dragonfly flying down around here like so. Just these little bugs. Um, they don't have to be huge. They don't have to be big. Uh, you just have to have fun with them when you put them in there. And then for the sake of this right here, I think this is, uh, I'm going to turn this in from, uh, put some more detail in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of just some pin marks here because um, I, I want it to be just a little looser. So I'm going to come and grab this right here, a little red, more of this red here. It's soaking into that watercolor pretty fast. A couple red pieces there. I want a little more of that orange to pop in. So I'm going to grab it right here and just let a couple pieces of orange come down like so. Uh, I would probably come back and clean up some of these tires right in here. But remember, uh, I'm, I'm a uh, whimsical artist who's telling a story. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this uh, water here where I've hashed that before. I'm going to come in with some green grass. He's out in the field. Why is he out in the field? Because they're chasing bugs. That's what you do. Chickens chase bugs. Um, so I've got these little bugs. I, I need a, a tiny little yellow. Uh, I need a little yellow butterfly right there. There he is. And there's a bee. And there's a bee. And there's a little dragonfly, maybe a little green. I talk to myself when I do this, even when I'm not on um, air. <laughs> uh, it just it just helps. Uh, okay. All right. Let me wash this brush out, which I didn't do before I did that. I'm going to come in with a little bit of uh, blue just right here and just, just a touch right in here. That's too much. I'm going to take some of that out and just a little bit over here with just some water and create a little bit of sky. Um, and then I want to use my pen to just create some grass that he's driving over here like so. Um, anyway, now uh, there's only one thing left to do, and I think uh, it's to uh, put a name on this. F-L-E-U-R-S. With a little flower on it, yeah. And I think that's, isn't that how you spell flowers? F-L-E-U-R-S. Fleurs. I think that's it in France. In, uh, in my, uh, it's the only French I know, Okay. And that ain't too good. So let's do let's do another one up here like this. He's always got one little peep who's looking the wrong direction. And let's put one more peep in the basket. Just give him a little bit. And uh, I have taken an hour and told you a story and shown you how to draw a bike and paint this. I'm going to put some a little bit of blue in here. Just grab a touch of this right here. Just some spots going around like that. Ever so lightly. I think a little bit of uh, purple underneath this bike, a little bit of a tail shadow coming out on the grass here, and maybe some more grass coming down. This grass has already been run over here. It's kind of flattened out. This grass is yet to be run over. So there we go, RooDoodles.com, and it's two, 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 two. <laughs> How about that? Um so there you go. There's your little trim that right there and get it framed and you're in business. Okay. Yeah. And it was called a fender. That's what you were looking for. You're looking for me to put a little fender back here and uh, Hey, I'll leave that for you. Uh, I didn't forget it. 
I just didn't have one on my bike. And the reason is, is because it made me uh, not be able to throw my leg over, but I'd have to throw my leg way over. And so I just wanted to step across. And so I didn't have one of those on my bike. If I wanted to just really make it a bike, uh, a cyclist thing, I'd go in here and create a little bit of chain on this. And I'd put some detail in the t toes. And I'll probably come back and do that once it dries a little bit. You can't do everything first round here. Sometimes you can. But uh, all right, so there it is. There's the little painting. Uh, springtime. Uh, and it's going to say something like, faster, they're getting away or something. You know, that's not very clever. But I'll think about it for a few minutes over another cup of tea. While I run to the post office to get my mail that I haven't seen in ages. So blessings to you all. Thank you for being on the show today. Love it that you're watching. Love it that you're taking notes. Love it that you're being a part of this. Uh, it's time to... Uh, uh, make like a herd of turtles to get out of here. Um, let's see. Brenda says the mm, paper is the most important factor in watercolor. Brenda, I am not going to argue with you, but I'm in an argumentative mode today. Um, but if you didn't have watercolor, it'd just be a white piece of paper. But I do think paper is important. However, I will tell you this. Um, uh, I have started painting on scrap paper and this desk paper. And when I go to a... Uh, uh, Italian restaurant. Oh my gosh. Uh, I love painting on the tablecloths and just being creative and watching it go and letting it turn into that whimsical art. And uh, so I, I'm with you. You're going to find out uh, what is the most important thing to you. And it's the style uh, is over all of that and how you tie that together with whatever medium you grab. So I love that though. Thank you for uh, your two cents. It, it's worth every bit of it. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. I think I've, uh, I'll answer some more questions, um, later. I'll come back to this. And if you got a question or two, throw it in there. All right. I've got to go. It's nine 59. It's uh what a great hour of teaching. Thank you, Andy Bean. I appreciate it so much. And I love all your comments. Love the bike. Sheila Nelson says, uh, sweat bees are too awful. <laughs> Uh, saw my first Robin today. Yep, there we go. Uh, cue the turtles, Chris Whitaker said. <laughs> All right, June Jones says, thank you, Rue. Great day, two, 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 you bet. And the turtles are here from Pat Brooks. So I'm out of here and uh, blessings for being a part of Rue Doodles. I'm going to be gone. Here it is right here. That's the painting. Let me just give you one last shot of it so you can see what it looks like in full blown right there. Boom. And... Um, I'm happy with it. Yeah, it's a fun little spring painting. Okay, see you Saturday, Lord willing, and uh, we'll go on from there. Got to have that music to go out on.